This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for tonight's Public Information Center meeting. This is meeting number two. At this time, we ask everyone to please mute yourselves. Again, the mute button is located at the bottom center of your screen and video participation is not required. It is optional if you'd like to have it on or not. More importantly, please make sure you note the chat box location. Again, at the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the little chat icon there and please do type in all of your questions and comments as the presentation is going along and we will address them during the Q&A portion. So before we get started, I want to thank everybody again for joining us tonight. This is Tuesday, December 14th. We are having this meeting from 5 to 7 p.m. And again, this is the second Public Information Center meeting for the Meadowlands Parkway Bridge over Norfolk Southern Rail Lines. I will read the invitation as it was in, as it was sent out to the public as well as advertised in the, the newspaper. Hudson County, in cooperation with the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, the New Jersey Department of Transportation, and Federal Highway Administration, are hosting this second Public Information Center meeting for the Meadowlands Parkway Bridge. The purpose of this second Public Information Center meeting is to review the project status and solicit public input and comment on the conceptual alternatives and preliminary preferred alternative, or PPA, for the proposed improvements to the Meadowlands Parkway Bridge and its approach roadways. <clears throat> this meeting is being conducted in conformance with federal and state regulations, and the public is invited and encouraged to comment on the alternatives. This meeting is open to all members of the public. Written comments will be accepted through January 31st of 2022, and comments may be mailed to me, the Community Involvement Facilitator, and I'll, I'll also go over that information at the end of the presentation, or you can send them to me via email. You can also put them through the project website, which is meadowlandsparkwaybridge.com. Thank you in advance for your continued involvement in the local concept development process. At this time, I'd like to turn over the presentation to our presenter, Julia from GPI. And once again, if you have any questions, please do use the chat box. Thank you. I don't know why you're muted, Julia. There we go. How about now? Okay, well, I didn't say much, so you didn't miss anything. <laughs> um, Welcome to the second Public Information Center for the Meadowlands Parkway Bridge over Norfolk Southern Rail Lines. Um, my name is Julia and I'll present be presenting the project this evening. <clears throat> the agenda for the meeting is to present the project team, the delivery process, a quick overview of the project location and existing conditions, environmental constraints and permits, stakeholder survey results, purpose and need, alternatives, and then we'll go over next steps and open the, the meeting up to Q&A. As Nicole said, you can enter comments or questions in the chat box and we'll address them at the end of the presentation in the order that they were received. The project team consists of representatives from Hudson County, Thomas Malavesi and Jose Sierra, the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, or NJTPA, Sasha Frimpong and Sarbjit Cajon, NJDOT, Pamela Garrett, Eileen Sheikh, and Nabil Ayub, and the consultant team, Greenman Peterson, or GPI. Uh, Bernie Borchers is the project manager, and Bill Farrow is the deputy project manager. The project delivery process consists of four distinct phases. The first phase is what we're in right now, local concept development. <clears throat> and this is where we collect data on the existing conditions and analyze uh, the, the data, um, develop the project's purpose and need, develop alternatives and impacts, and select a preliminary preferred alternative. 
This is followed by preliminary engineering, where the preliminary preferred alternative, which I will also refer to as PPA, is advanced to the point necessary to obtain approval of any required design exceptions and environmental document. The last phase in design is called local final design or just final design, um, where all necessary permits are obtained, right away is acquired, and the construction documents are finalized. After final design, the project advances to construction. Looking a little closer at the concept development phase, we're currently conducting our second round of public outreach after developing and evaluating alternatives. Once this round of meetings is complete, we expect to have a PPA selected that can advance into the next phase. So the project consists of the Meadowlands Parkway Bridge over Norfolk Southern Rail Lines and extends along Meadowlands Parkway from Seaview Drive to American Way south and north of the bridge, respectively. The project is adjacent to the Harmon Cove Towers and is in an area with a mix of residential, commercial, and industrial properties. There are several bus routes that, along the corridor and New Jersey Transit Secaucus Junction Station, where the Frank R. Lautenberg Station is approximately three miles south using Seaview Drive. So the existing structure was originally constructed in 1973 and underwent rehabilitation in 2005 and 2016. It's a five span steel girder bridge supported on reinforced concrete piers and abutments. Supplemental support columns and stiffeners are in place at several girders due to the complete section loss at the beam ends. You can see them in the photo at the bottom. Um, they're the green uh, support pillars. <clears throat> the bridge also carries several utilities, which some of which you can see in the bottom photo as well. Um, gas, water, electric, and communications are all carried over the bridge. The superstructure is in fair condition due to the severe corrosion at the girder ends, flanges, and bearings with overall section losses up to 100%. This is why the priority repairs that added supplemental support columns and stiffeners were conducted. And you can, again, you can see them in the photos on the slide. Um, evaluation of the concrete cores obtained in local concept development, which is sampled from the existing substructure units, indicate that the concrete quality is poor and has low concrete compressive strength. The deck has um, large asphalt patch spalls, severe scaling, and cracks with efflorescence. Um, and I believe the Meadowlands Parkway was resurfaced recently, so some of that may not be um, completely evident to uh, the visual, to, the, to your eye. Um, just to note, even if the bridge being in this condition, it doesn't imply that it's likely to collapse or that it's unsafe. It means it must be monitored, inspected, and maintained, and possibly rehabilitated or replaced. This bridge is inspected every two years, uh, most recently conducted in March of 2021. During local concept development, we also evaluated the existing roadway conditions, including traffic and crash data. Meadowlands Parkway within the project limits is a four lane major arterial with a posted speed limit of 30 miles an hour. There's no shoulders or sidewalk across the bridge, which is a, a tangent or straight section, and there's curves on both approaches. The road carries approximately 15,400 vehicles per day based on data collected in 2019. A crash analysis based on data from 2016 to 20. 18 indicated a total of 36 crashes over that three-year period. Most of them occurred at American Way. Overrepresentations, as listed on the slide, um, include same direction sideswipe, left turn, fixed object, at signalized intersection, dry pavement, and during the daytime. The overrepresentations are compared to um, all sites with similar uh, roadway cross sections. 
Um, the latter two, dry and day, indicate no issues with the pavement or lighting. Uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, there's lots of environmental constraints out in this area, um, given that the bridge crosses a tributary to the Hackensack River, uh, the proximity of the marsh, which is in orange. Um, this also includes suitable habitats for many species and being just within the Meadowlands itself. The rail line is also part of a historic district. Because of this, we anticipate at least six permits will be required for construction as noted on this slide. Many of them will come from uh, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. We also anticipate um, one for, from the um, United States Army Corps of Engineers and soil erosion and sediment control certification from um, a Hudson Essex Passaic County Collective. During the beginning of the project, um, as I'm sure some of you know, because um, you actually took the survey, <laughs> there was a survey available on the website and was also mailed to stake stakeholders. Um, it included several questions on facility use and project importance that was used to develop the purpose and need statement. We received 39 responses that indicated over half of respondents use the bridge daily. Uh, nearly half use public transportation and just under a third walk or bike. The survey questions shown on the right indicated a strong preference for resident, residential and commuter use, both local and regional, and to accommodate non-motorized use. So based on all the existing conditions and the survey, a purpose and need statement was developed. And the overall project purpose is to restore the structural and operational integrity of the bridge and provide for all modes of transportation. The need is driven primarily by the existing conditions and especially of the bridge, and the goals and objectives are from the stakeholder input. So now we'll get into alternatives. So there was a total of uh, eight alternatives which are listed on this slide. Uh, we're gonna go through each one on the next slides. There's um, one rehabilitation option, partial replacement, and five full replacements in addition to the no build option. So alternative one is the no build option. This alternative considers that no proposed improvements are implemented within the project limits. Inspection and repairs would continue, as would the associated maintenance costs. The bridge would also continue to deteriorate. And it's intended that this alternative serve as a reference for comparison to each of the other proposed alternatives, although it could be an option in any, any project. Alternative 2A is a rehabilitation option. I would require replacement of the reinforced concrete deck, structural steel repairs, bearing replacement, and concrete repairs to the substructure. The existing steel would be cleaned and painted in accordance with NJDOT standards. Uh, the rehabilitation would take place in several stages to maintain traffic during construction. This alternative would address the immediate need to bring the structure to a state of good repair but would not allow for widening to safely accommodate non-motorized use. Under this option, the existing deck and steel stringers would be completely replaced with a new superstructure. The new superstructure would require rehabilitation to the existing substructure. New bearings would be installed to support the new superstructure. And again, it would be completed in several stages to maintain traffic on the bridge and to facilitate relocation of utilities. This option would address the immediate need to bring the structure to a state of good repair, but would only allow widening to accommodate a sidewalk along the southbound side. 
We'll also discuss the noted U-turn on, on the next few slides. Alternative three is the start of our complete replacement um, alternatives. This alternative proposes to replace the existing bridge and widen the cross section to include sidewalk along the southbound direction of Meadowlands Parkway while maintaining the existing four travel lanes at their existing widths. So the resulting superstructure would consist of a six foot wide sidewalk, four travel lanes that are 12 to 13 feet wide. The sidewalk on the new bridge would be extended south to Seaview Drive where the signal would be modified as needed for Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA and manual on uniform traffic control devices or MUTC compliance. <clears throat> the blue or teal areas um, indicate locations that would require right-of-way acquisitions for stormwater management. And just to note, alternatives four through six propose similar elements. Similarly, the sidewalk on the new bridge would be extended north to the Harmon Cove lower driveway ramp. Construction of this proposed sidewalk will require a retaining wall along Meadowlands Parkway and a crosswalk to get to the existing sidewalk adjacent to the Harmon Cove lower driveway ramp on the other side. To address stakeholder requests for a northbound left turn into the Harmon Cove upper driveway, a U-turn lane is proposed at American Way. This U-turn provides a safe and controlled way to access both the upper and lower driveways. Um, this signal would also be modified as needed for ADA and MUTCD compliance. And again, alternatives four through, through six propose similar elements. Alternative number four is also a bridge replacement and includes buffered bike lanes along each direction of Meadowlands Parkway from Seaview Drive to American Way. The resulting superstructure would consist of a six foot wide sidewalk in the southbound direction, a five foot wide bike lane with a two foot wide buffer in each direction, and four 12 foot, 12 foot wide travel lanes. The resulting wider cross section will impact the Harmon Cove upper driveway structure and require realignment of Secaucus Road and Harmon Cove lower driveway ramps. Alternative number five is similar to alternative number four, except that it adds sidewalk along the northbound directions of Meadowlands Parkway from Seaview Drive to American Way. So we would have a six foot wide sidewalk, five foot wide bike lane with a two foot wide buffer in each direction as well as the four 12 foot wide travel lanes. Um, the impacts are similar as alternative number four, plus additional widening along the northbound side of Meadowlands Parkway um, and an extended retaining wall between the northbound side of Meadowlands Parkway and the ramp from Secaucus Road. Alternative six proposes the same cross section as alternative number four, but shifts the tangent section of Meadowlands Parkway alignment over the rail lines and Secaucus Road about 15 feet to the east to avoid impacts to the Harmon Cove upper driveway structure. This proposed shift, which is um, shown, the existing is shown in the pink dashed, so you can see where the existing bridge is compared to the proposed and how we shifted it. Um, it requires additional realignment of Secaucus Road ramp, as well as additional retaining wall along the northbound direction of Meadowlands Parkway. The benefit to shifting the road to the east is improved constructability and uh, being able to keep the Harmon Cove upper driveway access um, available during construction for a longer duration. Alternative seven proposes further widening of Meadowlands Parkway to provide a left turn lane into the Harmon Cove upper driveway structure. 
So the resulting superstructure would consist of a six foot wide sidewalk in the southbound direction, five foot wide bike lanes with two foot wide buffers in each direction, four 12 foot wide travel lanes, and a 12 foot wide northbound left turn lane. <clears throat> This alternative will require reconstruction of a portion of the Harmon Cove upper driveway structure to accommodate left turning vehicle path. Since northbound left turning traffic into Harmon Cove is accommodated at the upper driveway, no U turn lane is proposed at American Way under this alternative. Because this turn is not controlled, there's an increased chance of left turn crashes, particularly due to shadowing. Shadowing crashes occur when crossing two opposing lanes of traffic and the outside vehicle is hidden by an inside vehicle. So the turning vehicle executes their movements without seeing the outside vehicle. This can result in a crash. And just to note, um, left turn crashes are typically more severe than rear end or side swipe type crashes. Again, the sidewalk and bike lanes on the new bridge would extend south to Seaview Drive, where the signal would be modified for ADA and MUTCD compliance. And similarly in the north, uh, to the north of the bridge. Um, since the northbound left turning traffic into Harmon Cove is accommodated at the upper driveway in this alternative, uh, we would not propose the U-turn lane at American Way. So the signal would still be modified as needed for ADA and MUTCD compliance. So that's all the alternatives. Um, another element of local concept development is evaluating operations during construction. How will we build the improvements while minimizing impacts? So several detour options were considered. The route highlighted in yellow, yellow was analyzed uh, given factors such as land use, geometry, and reserve capacity on the route. Four options were analyzed and compared to the no build for the year 2026, which is when we anticipate the project could begin construction. As shown, a detour of a single direction or both directions would significantly reduce the operations along the route, particularly at County Avenue, and Secaucus Road intersection and the new County Road and Seaview Drive intersection. Therefore, during construction, Meadowlands Parkway will be reduced to a single lane in each direction. Certain stages may require some detouring to move in materials, equipment, or change construction stages, but predominantly um, Meadowlands Parkway Bridge will uh, be open to traffic with a single lane in each direction. <clears throat> So potential construction staging sequence is shown on this slide. Um, only the main stages are, sh are shown. There will be uh, probably some sub stages uh, within this um, as we get into design, those, will, those details will be worked out. <clears throat> so beginning with the existing bridge in the upper left, traffic would be shifted to one lane in each direction onto the current bridge while a portion of the new bridge is built. In the second stage, work on the new bridge would be conducted in the middle with one travel lane on each side of the work zone. One travel lane would remain on the existing bridge and the other would be um, <clears throat> diverted to the new structure. Finally, traffic would be shifted onto the new bridge while the remainder of the existing bridge is replaced. So based on all our analysis and assessments during local concept development, the recommended preliminary preferred alternative or PPA is alternative number six. Again, this shifts the tangent section of Meadowlands Parkway alignment over the rail lines and Secaucus Road about 15 feet to the east to avoid impacts to the Harmon Cove upper driveway structure. Again, the benefit to shifting the road to the east is improved constructability and less closures of the upper driveway. The PPA was selected by the project team based on the aforementioned benefits, 
um, as well as local input. Our next steps for this project, um, we're doing the Public Information Center today, right now. Um, we're going to have a comment period, as Nicole said, until January 31st of 2022. Um, afterwards, a preliminary preferred alternative will be selected and, uh, or I guess, officially selected. Um, and then the local concept development phase will be wrapped up. So that concludes the presentation. We'll now open up the meeting for questions or comments, starting with anything entered into the chat box. If you think of anything after this meeting, you can contact Nicole or you can contact the county engineer. His information is provided on the slide or you can visit the project website, which is also shown on the slide. <clears throat> and a recording of this meeting will also be posted to the project website. Thank you, Julia. And for those of you listening in, because I know we do have a few people who called in, uh, the contact information again is the Hudson County engineer, Mr. Tom Malavesi. His phone number is 201-369-4340, extension 4169, or his email is T Malavesi, that's M-A-L-A-V-A-S-I at H C nj.us. And once again, the project website is always available, meadowlandsparkwaybridge.com. So at this point, what we'd like to do is open up our meeting to questions, and this is certainly the time for us to go back and re-explain any of the alternatives, or if perhaps you were late to the meeting, you can certainly ask Julia to go over those again. And please, when you ask any questions into the chat box, I do uh, recommend that you mention which alternative you're referencing, because we had a meeting very similar to this and people started asking questions, but not referencing which alternative their question was in relation to, and it was a little tricky. So yes, if you can, please ask any questions into the chat box, comments are welcome there also. I'm gonna start with the first question that came in during the presentation. Are there any takings going to be required from properties along Meadowlands Parkway in order to accommodate any of these alternatives? Um, so the answer to that is yes, there will be um, some takings. They're mostly for um, slope easements and to accommodate the stormwater management basins that will be required for a project of this size. Great, thank you. And the next question says, for alternative six, why not have single 10 inch SUP on each side with Jersey barriers to create separation? All right, I gotta read that comment. I think by SUP, I guess maybe they mean multi-use path or something like a shared use. Shared, shared, use, path. shared use path on each side. <clears throat> Um, certainly would be an option. The, I think the concern with putting Jersey barriers up, um, you know, between, uh, the shared use path and the, the roadway is now we have an, an additional barrier we have to protect and also providing, uh, ADA access across that upper Harmon Cove driveway with the barrier, um, would be a, a bit complicated and might, might be an issue. Um, I think we, we we chose to go with you know typical standard bike lanes and uh, sidewalks. That's where we keep pedestrians and bicyclists um, in their own in their own areas. And there are thanks, Chris. And there are many. Uh, I'm seeing a few more questions about option six. If maybe we could bring that back up on the screen so we can reference it as we go along. Um, the next question says, what factors led to option number six? maybe being the recommended PPA. Yep, I'm just gonna put it up right now. Okay. Um, so there were a couple things that, that led to alternative six. Um, one, by shifting the alignment, like I said, um, 
we can not impact the Harmon Cove upper driveway. And what that means for residents of the tower is uh, we don't have to close access to that driveway during construction as often um, as we would if we didn't shift the alignment. Um, we received comments from a stakeholders meeting that um, the lower driveway in that area um, has been flooding recently, and they were concerned that they um, not being able to access the upper driveway uh, might become an issue. Um, so that was that was one major point on it. <clears throat> um, does anybody else want to jump in? I think, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Okay, then. And while we're on the subject of alternative six, I'm going to get to one more question, then we'll go to the one I right before it. On, on alternative six, where does the bike lane start and end? American Way on the north side and what on the south? Seaview Drive. So we're basically going from uh, traffic signal to traffic signal. Um, okay. I, I don't want to speak for Secaucus, um, but I believe there are other plans for, for future bike lanes in the area um, that could certainly uh, be connected to what we're doing here. Okay, thanks. And just, if you just, could- I may just add something, Nicole. Just so oh, sorry, go ahead. Is, mm -hmm. It's okay to build on uh, what Julia said, just so everybody remembers that, that uh, Meadowlands Parkway is not a county road, so we have limited jurisdiction um, once we get beyond the bridge. In fact, the bridge is, is currently a, a town-owned bridge. Um, the county will be taking it over once once it's uh, reconstructed. So um, we've, we've provided provisions in this alternative to allow for Secaucus to continue the bike lane as they, as they fee, see fit in the future. So just want to make that a point that it's not a county road, so we really can't go any further than, than we already have. Thanks, Tom. Any other comments on that? Or should we move to the next question? And we can get certainly get back to it. We have plenty of time for additional questions and encourage everyone to ask them at this time. Now is your opportunity to provide questions or feedback to our team. If uh, Julia, if you could go back to the beginning of the presentation for the slide that shows the four phases uh sure one moment someone asked the question why is the construction happening five years from now so i just thought that maybe you could explain how we go through each of the four uh three phases before we get to construction and why they take so long sure so we're going we're going back to the very very beginning of the presentation um so this project will be following um the uh sort of the, it's it's NJDOT primarily, but um, their delivery process, but NJTPA also follows a similar process. Um, so there's four distinct phases. Uh, right now we're in concept development, uh, local concept development. Once we're finished with local concept development, which should occur mid next year, um, if not sooner, <laughs> hopefully sooner, um, the project goes um, to local preliminary engineering. Um, and uh, at that point, the uh, the PPA is refined a little bit more. Some of the some of the other details that we don't really get into in concept development are worked out. Um, and we try to get an approved environmental document, which is a federal requirement. Um, and we also, if there's any design exceptions, uh, from any standards set forth by federal or state or county local standards, uh, design standards for the roadway or the bridge. Uh, we obtain those now. Uh, we also refine things like um, the size of the stormwater management basin. You know, we get some additional testing done. Um, that takes about, uh, depending on the project, this one is, um, this one also has to deal with the railroad. Um, so that could take one, maybe one and a half years. After that, it moves into final design. Um, that can that can take another year to two years. Um, right away acquisition is anywhere from 18 to 24 months. 
um, to get through. And then after that, um, it goes to construction. Uh, I believe we're anticipating right now two to three construction seasons, probably three, one for each phase. Um, so those are the four phases. And then just to just to note, in between local concept development and local preliminary engineering, um, typically the project goes out for a solicitation for a consultant. Um, it's not guaranteed that we that we GPI um, just continue the project when local concept development is is done. There's a uh, proposal process that that has to be done, and um, you know. Uh, Things have to be scored, proposals, things like that, um, interviews, and then whoever the um, consultant is that awarded for local preliminary engineering, they will generally take it through to final design. At the end of final design, you have your um, construction contract documents that has to go out to bid um, for contractors to uh, review the plans, ask questions, come up with uh, their game plan and their cost estimate. Um, before the construction contract is awarded. Um, so even in between, even with these four phases, in between some of them, there are um, some additional, there's additional time for um, proposals and contract awards and negotiations and things like that. So that's why this process takes about five years. And then funding. <laughs> Funding's always, you know, a fun one, uh, federal funding. That, that usually takes a little bit longer. Um, there's a lot more paperwork. Um, so that's that's why it's a, a process that takes about five years to get to construction. Awesome, thanks Julia for explaining that. We also received some more comments and questions here in the chat box and I hope you'll all continue to please put them in there as we go along. The next person has put a URL here for the Brooklyn Bridge bikeways with the Jersey barrier, which we can't bring up at this time, but we will certainly forward that on to our project team for review and consideration. <clears throat> and the next question says, two-way bike lane or not, Jersey barriers would be great, at least for the parts where it's possible. The rendering show no protection of the buffer to keep cars out. Is that correct? There's no positive uh, reinforcement that that's a buffer. Um, we've done, uh, Chris, what are they called? Flexible delineators. <laughs> Flexible delineators, yeah, we could do uh, flexible delineators to, you know, keep uh, vehicles out of there. I mean, fortunately, this this roadway is, uh, you, you know, some other areas we put the flexible delineators on to basically keep cars from parking into the in the uh, the bike lanes. It's a typical issue in the city. Um, here, you know, it's it's a, it's it's a commuter route, so and there's not really any areas that really stop uh, or people would need to stop. So. Um, you know, the, the protection is nice, but then again, when we get into barriers and things like that, that needs protection as well. And then the, the other thing to consider too is snow removal. Um, if you have a barrier or some type of separation between the bike lanes and the roadway, um, you, you'll have a plow come through and they won't have, A, they might not have anywhere to put the snow, uh, B, the, the, the bike lane may uh, end up, you know, not getting plowed at all. Yeah, that may be where they put the snow and then look. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's it's also similar to, um, you know, a shoulder. You typically you wouldn't drive in it. You may pull over in an emergency. Um, but generally, the, that white line keeps people out from driving it. But um, we can certainly look at some positive um, affirmations for the buffer. Um, that way, it's, it's clear that uh, vehicles should not be in the bike lane. Great, thank you so much. And the next question says, when will you be speaking with affected property owners whose land will be affected so that impacts to the developed properties can be determined? Typically, um, speaking to individual property owners is done in final design when the right-of-way acquisition process is started. Um, however, depending on the amount of impacts, um, there have been situations where um, we reach out to property owners as early as preliminary engineering 
um, when we, we have a little bit more detail. Um, it just depends on the project, typically in final design, um, but there have been cases where we do it in the phase before. Um, so you're still, you're still looking at another year or two before um, individual property owners be contacted. Okay, thank you. And yeah, if you can bring uh, up... Nicole, if I could add... Um, sure, absolutely. Other projects, we, we will... Generally, we'll approach the property owners and at least let them know it's coming during preliminary. Um, we try not to wait till final, only because the acquisition can take a while. So the sooner we let people know, the better. So we generally, once we identify the properties, we'll we'll try and reach out for them in preliminary and have conversations. Okay, thank you, Tom. And if you could bring up number six again, Julia, another question here. So just because there might be flooding on lower HCT road, number six was selected. We plan to reduce the flooding by building a flood barrier. Would that alter your selection? Um, I don't think number six was entirely selected on the flooding. That was just one of one of the main points was to keep the Harmon Cove upper driveway access open more. Um, that was sort of hashed out before we were made aware of the amount of flooding that was happening at the lower driveway. Um, so there's there's other things from a constructability standpoint that came into uh, came into play. Um, besides the flooding, I don't know if um, if the county wants to to add anything to that. Not to put Tom on the spot. But. Yeah, no, I think uh, the issue with the flooding that we discussed at, at our last meeting uh, really had to do with uh, during construction, as you said, um, because if we closed up the upper driveway, how do people get get home? Um, so once everything is done, um, the upper driveway will be available as it is now. So really it was a it was a factor in deciding um, the constructability of the project so one of the factors we look at is is constructability and I think uh, alternate six um, gave us a better option at that because of the ability to keep to minimize the closure of the upper driveway and we will you know we'll, I, I see that I see that uh, since the Harmon Cove Towers is looking at that we will certainly coordinate with them uh, we were talking about, you know, what temporary measures we could take during construction to help with the flooding. And if they're looking at something that maybe we can, we can piggyback on what they're doing. And, uh, and going back to the comment about five years from now, maybe they'll be done by then. I'm not <laughs> sure what their time frame is. Okay. Thank you, Tom. And another question that came through was, does this project need the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority approval or NJSEA? Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna have to have formal approval, but since we're in the district, they will most likely need to review whatever we're doing, um, whether they give formal approval or not for this type of project, I'm not entirely sure. But they'll definitely be involved. Okay. And if snow removal is a concern, why raise the sidewalk? Um, sidewalks are typically raised. There's usually um, a curb and then sidewalk next to it. Um, typically, I don't know, eight or nine inch curb, maybe, or maybe down to six. Um, but that's that's pretty standard. It provides, um, a pos again, a positive uh, uh, reinforcement to everyone that uses the roadway that this is sidewalk. It's not to be traveled on. If I left it flat, um, you know, cars may be more, and I don't have delineators or uh, anything like that, you know, cars may be tempted to use it. Okay, thank you. I know that Tom had just discussed some of those factors that 
led into six being the recommended PPA. Are there any other factors that maybe any of the other team members want to discuss? Um, sure, I guess we can um, discuss that at the last stakeholders meeting um, when all of the alternatives were presented, we did um, ask for their opinion on their, I guess, their, their, I guess, preference on all the alternatives and, um, and option six was the most likable is if for lack of a better word, <laughs> um, out of all of the other alternatives. So that was one of the, another factor that was used um, while making the decision as well. Yep, and there's, there's things like cost and safety and right. um, impacts to, to right away, access, all, all sorts of numbers of factors um, that, that are part of the selection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I think that alternate alternate six alternate six gave gave really the maximum use of of the facility with with sidewalks and bike lanes on both sides. Um, uh, and our last meeting, alternative seven was was not in, not favorable because of the the concerns about the left turn lane. So uh, I think this is the alternative we chose gives the maximum use of the structure as well as, uh, as we said earlier, the uh, constructability seemed to be the best given the situation out there. So I thought we had a good list of reasons why we chose this. Correct. Thank you, Sarbjit and Tom for that response. We talked about the construction start date. And of course the, the uh, question is when approximately would you imagine that the construction would be complete? Um, we probably need a year for each phase, I would think. Um, so at least three years. So what did we say? Start 2026, 2029. Um, does that sound about right, Bill? You can just give a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank there you. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so around 2029. Okay, great. Thank you. A uh, comment here says, I recommend looking at raising the bike lane on the bridge as a way of providing further separation from the traffic. We can take that into consideration. Um, at that point, it's really a shared use path and then you don't have the um, distinct areas for bicyclists versus pedestrians. So then um, they got to fight it out <laughs> for the space. Julia, just let me throw something out there. I, I'm not sure. sure if it's something that could be done. Um, if you raise the bike path, which is, is not a, may not be a bad idea, would you then further raise the sidewalk to, to avoid it from becoming a, a shared use path? I mean, it, it may lead to a few issues with handicapped accessibility, but maybe those can be worked out in design. That way we can still have two distinct um, pathways, one that's clearly for bikes and then one that's uh, cl clearly for the rest, uh, pedestrians. Yeah, I, I don't I think it's what, ever been done. Just throwing it out. Yeah, I've never done it personally. <laughs> I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's been done somewhere. So it's not it's not out of the realm of uh, possibilities. I think that's uh, that's thinking outside the box there, Tom. Yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah that was a, no that's a good comment we can we can certainly look at at that as an option excellent thank you guys uh, another question here says do you have an approximate cost yeah, of six versus the others not off the top of my head um chris i don't know if you have the numbers in front of you um uh, yeah i can pull it from our uh our matrix okay um sorry are you okay with um numbers with the yes yes <laughs> that, yeah. 
uh, yes. they're subject to change. No, yes, of course. Yes, and these things are uh, very subject to change, especially these days currently with um, the cost the cost of construction we're seeing in some projects, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, we're looking at about uh, 40 million for alternative six, um, and then that is actually, um, you know, the remainder of the alternatives range, you know, anywhere from, for the replacement alternatives, we're starting at about 30 million, um, the rehab, uh, and uh, superstructure replacements are below that. You're looking at 13 and 26 million. Um, so it's it's not the most expensive option, but it's um, it's definitely not the cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, seven would be the most expensive because it's also the widest bridge. Yes, that's 46 million. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. And. Uh, since we just discussed the option or discussed, you know, talking about raising the bike lane, a follow-up question to that came in, and it's a great one. How would you plow the sidewalks if it was raised? Well, I don't think the Departments of Public Works plow sidewalks, not to my knowledge. Um, I'm not sure. Nope. Well, we, we, we do. We do. The sidewalks are the responsibility of the property owner. Yes. So in this case, the county will be the property owner. So okay. we would have to we would have to clear the sidewalks. But you wouldn't take like a a, a road plow and, and go over it, would you? No, I believe they have some smaller machines that do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't. We got some pretty big plows. We wouldn't run one of those across uh, across that. No. Okay. <laughs> Just, just so, so we're all clear, you know, there won't be uh, sprays of snow. For... <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was a great question for sure. And we're still on option six here. Another question says, in option six, are we allowing entry of vehicles from the towers into the bridge? Um. Like no. exit from the driveways? No. No, the exit, the entrances and exits will remain as they are today. Yeah, the the, the current structure is not um, wide enough for two lane two way traffic, nor is that really within our the scope of this project. <clears throat> Okay, thank you so much for that. If you have additional questions or comments, again, please keep them coming into the chat box and we are getting through them one by one. So thank you guys for your patience. Our next comment here says, it would be really good to protect the bike lanes physically. Bike lanes with no protection are often blocked by drivers stopped for one reason or another and also leave cyclists vulnerable to distracted or impaired drivers. Flex posts generally offer very little protection. Jersey barriers would be best. Carlo's suggestion is to raise the bike paths is also a great one. Carlos's suggestion, sorry. <clears throat> a additional uh, feedback from this individual says, there are also armadillos, those little concrete curbs, protecting a two-way bike path on Meadowlands Parkway just south of NJ3. Does snow removal work there? Why not do something similar here? Um, I don't think we're opposed to armadillos um, at this point. Um, it's certainly still on the tables. Of course, Jersey barriers everywhere would be awesome, um, but they're just not feasible everywhere. Again, it's considered yeah. a object it has a blunt end and you need to protect it so you're going to have um, impact attenuators um, taking up space as well um, so we have to look for some options besides the jersey barrier i think it, yeah. it, julia I'm, I'm looking at i'm looking at uh, the suggested location and uh, mm -hmm. they've got uh, you yeah, know they've got a curved island with uh, a, like a stamped brick pattern in between with flexible delineators in between something we can certainly look at um something to consider so we will certainly uh we can talk about that further but that might not be a bad idea and then we could be consistent with the rest of uh Secaucus's bike lane 
So something we can look into. Absolutely. Sure. Um, and then I guess the other question, does the snow removal work with the armadillos? I have the same question, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I don't know if you know it, if you've had experience with them, Tom. Do they just raise a platform? Um, yeah, I, I haven't, but uh, you know, I would imagine you would treat it just like a sidewalk. You would pile up to it, and then uh, you'd have to get a smaller machine in there to clear the bike path. Um, okay. You know, many many people ask, well, why are you clearing the bike path in the snow? Well, you'd be surprised how many people still bike in the snow. So they do have to be cleared. So that's something we would have to. Uh, mm -hmm either do ourselves or, or work with Secaucus on, on doing that, something we need to work out. Okay. Okay, thank you guys. We're going on to our next comment and question. Hearts would want to sit down with the county sooner rather than later if our properties are affected. Also, will NJSEA traffic improvement funds or TMAN be used for this project? Um, I do not believe those funds will be used for this project. Um, I don't know if we're at the point for the next phases to determine the funding. I don't know. Um, that's really a question for NJTPA. No, those funds will not be used. Um, only federal funding will be used for this project. Thank you. No problem. I mean, I, I can look at what I will do is I will um, look at the concept plan you've got, Julia. Mm -hmm. Look at our tax maps to see. I, I can identify roughly whose property will be impacted. And if Hearts Mountains is, we can certainly uh, open up a dialogue sooner rather than later. Okay, great. Thank you for bringing that to our attention and thank you for your response. Another uh, comment says non-construction residents should have limited impact on the engineering decision. What cost savings number six? Um, well, I mean, the, the cost savings compared to what? I'm not. Not I don't sure. think we we don't really base the decisions on the, the cost as a primary driver. It's it's about the safety and the um, what's necessary for the bridge. Um, I'm not. I it, yeah. it appears. Yeah. It appears. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It appears that the uh, the individual has jumped off of the meeting, so unfortunately, we can't oh. get a more specific uh, question. But of course, you can reach out to us via the project website or send a message to Tom or I, and we will get it, it answered. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to the next question. Also regarding alternative six, it appears that option six does not provide a sidewalk on the northbound side. Why not? Um, the primary generators are really on the southbound side um, and in discussions with Secaucus um, that um, they agreed that sidewalk wasn't um, necessary on the northbound direction. Um, we can certainly look into it um, in design if there's more generators that come up and the northbound direction is needed. Um, but it was mostly from the, um, we got the towers there um, and the townhomes. So those those were the major generators for the sidewalk. Um, I don't know if there's something else you want to add, Tom. Yeah, plus it, as you get away from the bridge, uh, towards the hospital, there, that's, there's only sidewalk on one side. So Secaucus doesn't have a sidewalk the entire way um, on the southbound side. So we basically just connected to what they have. And then once you get to uh, America Way, then there's a crosswalk and then there's sidewalk on, on the other side. So we really did it to connect to their existing sidewalk network.
Okay, thank you guys for those responses. Uh, next comment just says, thank you for holding this and we'd like to say thank you for participating in the process and for all of the wonderful questions and comments that we've received thus far and we are still again open to them we will be here through 7 p.m it is now 6 p.m so we do have another hour to go in case anyone joins late but we're going to continue on with the next question in the chat box and we hope that you'll continue to put them in there next question says is providing a bike path on the bridge necessary as there doesn't seem to be connectivity on either side of the project scope um, the bike path was something that was um, brought up in this stakeholder survey. Um, it seemed to be um, a pretty big request. Um, so we're kind of setting the foundation here for Secaucus to, um, you know, continue with um, other bike lanes in the future. Um, so there may not be connectivity now, um, but there, there, it's possible that it will be in the future. I mean, Secaucus does have a bike lane up to Harmon Plaza, a little bit past Harmon Plaza from Route 3. So as, as Julia said, you know, we, we're trying to accommodate them in their future, you know, their future thoughts about creating bike lanes for everyone. So uh, this, does, this does tie into, you know, some things they already have um, to give them the opportunity to continue them in the future. It would, it would, it would not behoove us to build this bridge without it and then have them extend their bike lane and then there's no way for people to get across the bridge so uh, we're trying to think uh, think long term and provide this for uh, for them right because once once this is uh, redone it should be good for another 75 years so um, we'll all be retired by then if, if it's designed and built right yes <laughs> Sadly, sadly, the one that we're working on is not 75 years old and we're replacing it, but that's uh, yeah, true. Yes. <clears throat> okay, great. Uh, thank you guys again. I have uh, another question here. It says, to clarify the issue around needing to protect any Jersey barriers, are you only referring to the blunt ends where the barriers start, where the impact attenuators would take up space along the line that the barriers run or do the barriers require protection along their full extent from drivers side swiping them um so protecting the jersey barriers is the blunt end so the impact attenuators um the design of the jersey barrier is such that you wouldn't need um, additional protection um, from side swiping that's kind of how they're designed um, but the impact attenuators do take up a little bit more space than the width of the jersey barrier um, that we need to take into account yes and and, and again having a, a fixed object immediately adjacent to the lane is another object that can be struck by vehicles um, you know if, if someone were to leave the lane and you know drift into that buffer area and hit a delineator it's a lot better than hitting a, a jersey barrier and also you got to remember too uh you know this is a long stretch of, of road between the intersections and say a car were to break down or uh have to come to a stop and they'd have to get out of the car if you have a jersey barrier there that's kind of uh it's an additional encumbrance for you know if you need if someone needs to exit their vehicle or there's an issue or an emergency um you know it's, it's another barrier in the way um that could be a problem so that's why we really try to reserve the Jersey barrier for locations that, that truly need the protection um, where, you know, a crash can, uh, again, any crash is bad and we want to avoid crashes as much as possible and give everybody their space, but we, we need to consider all the, uh, the implications of that. Hi, can I maybe respond quickly uh, out loud? I've been typing a few of these comments, so. Sure. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate you humoring all of these questions about the different kinds of barriers. Um, just to respond, to, oh, this is Ryan Williams. I'm a, a Bike JC person also. I think this the plans you're showing look great. I appreciate the work. Uh, to respond a little bit to what Chris was just saying, um, I mean, if, if there's a concern that drivers would be drifting into Jersey barriers, 
uh, then you know you have, you have to think about what that says about leaving this cycle lane unprotected at all, um, right? It's it's better, that that's sort of what they're there for, and that's why they are a good design element in this situation. Um, it totally makes sense that the impact attenuators need a little more space, even that they are a bit wider than the jersey barriers themselves. So. I guess I didn't see whether there's space for that at the ends of the planned bike lanes. It seems like the roads kind of, there's more going on that I could imagine they would fit uh, at those start and end points. You know, that seems like kind of a, a small thing to have to work in in the scheme of things to get a real protected bike lane. Um, but yeah, just echoing again, I think uh, some of these options around like raising the bike lane would be great to look at. Having the two-way cycle track could allow plows to go through and could match the bike lane further up on Meadowlands Parkway. Par Parkway. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we got, I think we got some good alignment on that. Um, and it, yeah, it just to reemphasize, like it, it, having having cyclists just in a, a painted line next to, you know, these are 12-foot lanes. That's like, you know, highway widths. People are going to be driving fast. Um, coming over the bridge, there's less visibility. It's just, it, it would be really, 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 really good to get some physical protection in there. Um, but so that, that's all. Thanks a lot. Sure. And um, we're not saying we won't provide uh, any physical separation. And, and uh, I apologize, our, our renderings were just paint at this point, um, but can't guarantee Jersey Barrier everywhere for every bike lane. Um, but we, we're certainly going to look into some of the other options for protection. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Ryan, and thank you for the response, Julia. We have a couple more comments and questions here in the chat box, so we'll move right along. I uh, have to ask the question, if a single 14-foot wide shared use path on one side was considered again with jersey barriers wide enough for lanes to afford a good level for pedestrians and cyclists um we did not look at a 14 foot wide shared use path on one side um Thomas, something we could we could certainly at? Yeah, and again, also coordinating with Secaucus as to what their plans are for the bicycle lane. I know they have the two-way bike lane further north. If that's something they were going to continue south, then it would make sense to have a similar type uh, cross-section here, right? Sure. Okay. Another link was entered here, and again, we will review those offline since we can't do them during the meeting. Another question came in regarding the construction. Do you have an, any idea of how long the Harmon Cove upper level would be closed during construction? Um, I don't have that specific detail worked out right now. Um, again, with alternative six, it would be minimal um so it would be during uh, if we had to do any staging changes move in equipment move in materials cranes things like that um we, there may need to be some short-term closures um all those specific details on the, the hours and the days um are typically hashed out in um preliminary engineering and design and we can certainly coordinate with the um, the Harmon Cove Tower um, if they have a, I assume they have a homeowners association or a condo association. Um, that's certainly something we can run by them as well. Okay, thank you. And at this point, we have gone through all of the questions in the chat box. But I do have one person who called in, so I'm just going to unmute them for one moment. So, caller, you are unmuted. If you have any questions, now is your opportunity to ask. Yes. Uh, have you uh, unmuted? Yes, My phone. I can hear you. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, uh, referencing uh, these additional lanes, the SUPs, uh, 
prior to, uh, I guess, the collapse or whatever happened, there was a, a path. There was a, a train uh, station uh, for Harmon Cove Towers. And there was a, uh, a walkway which was uh, kind of cantilevered off of the roadway itself. Uh, at this point, it's probably 15 years ago when it was condemned. Uh, essentially, when the uh, station, when the when the rail line was rerouted, is it possible that uh, it would simplify your construction? I don't mean to be the genius engineer that you know comes up with a solution here, but would it be simpler and cheaper just to attach this thing? I mean, you're not talking about running trucks over it. It's uh, pedestrians and bicycles. I believe it was a a board like a like a boardwalk uh, at the time. Uh, thank you for taking my call. T taking my call. Thank you for your question. Um, I believe we did look at um, reinstating the uh, boardwalk, if you want, want to call it that. Um, it doesn't really simplify anything. Um, it's it's another structure that's out there that has to be design standards. Um, so I don't I don't know if Tom or Bill wants to to speak to that in any greater detail since I'm I'm not the structures guy. <laughs> but I, I would have to say, and, and we 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 became aware of that. Unfortunately, we can't seem to find any any uh, detailed plans on it. We've been looking and haven't found anything. But um, I would say that uh, you know if we were rehabilitating the bridge um that might have been an option but i think we're beyond um rehabilitation given the you know the pictures that we've all seen of the deterioration so um since we're starting over i think uh you know rather than trying to retrofit a, a, a bridge with a cantilever section hanging off the side i would think it's better to de design everything uh in it all at one time um, you know, Bill may have some structural comments on that, but just 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 the non-structural engineer's uh, interpretation. Yeah, and we we did look at replacing that walkway with a separate pedestrian bridge across, but the location of where that bridge is, it would really only accommodate pedestrians and bicyclists coming from Harmon Cove Towers across the bridge. And we wanted to, with suggestion from the town, wanted to have the bike lane open to anybody traveling up and down Metal Island Parkway. So that may have more sense for it to be actually on the bridge next to the roadway than off the side where that that existing walkway used to be. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, team. And another question here again regarding that upper level closure at Harmon Cove Towers. Do you think it might be hours, days, weeks? Any rough idea? I don't have that information uh, hashed out at this time. I doubt it would be for weeks. Um, there may be instances where we need to close it for a couple hours, and there may be instances where we might need to close it for a couple days. Um, but until we, we get into the finer um, details of the construction staging and, and looking at um, substages and uh, how we're going to move equipment in and, and what restrictions we have from the railroad and what restrictions we have from uh, env environmental standpoint um, that can all change everything so i can't really give uh, a definitive answer at this time okay thank you and at this time we've gotten through again all of the questions and comments in the chat box so once again, we are here until 7 p.m., so please continue to put them into the chat box as they come up in your mind. Or if after this presentation is over, of course, you have the option to send us a message through the project website, or you can email Tom Malavasi, the Hudson County engineer, and his contact information is also available on the website. So I will wait and see if we have any additional questions before we mute ourselves and wait and see if anyone else has any questions or comments. Once again, that comment period is through January 31st of 
22, which is next month. I'm not seeing any additional comments or questions in the chat box at this time. Just as I said that, there's one right now. What type of repair work needs to be done before the start of construction on the existing bridge? Very minimal. Um, they've already done the major repair work to the bridge to carry traffic over it, so there could be possibly some repairs to the top surface. Um, but for the most part, the bridge is in okay shape to carry traffic. Over this way. Thanks, Bill. And the uh, next question is, is there any way to design pedestrian and bike lanes at grade to avoid having to widen the bridge? Um, by at grade, I'm not, I'm I don't quite understand the question. Is at grade, do we mean the on, the, on the ground? Underneath the bridge are we talking about? If the person could clarify, that would be great. Yes, and at this time, since we are running down to the end of the, um, you know, questions coming into the chat box, by all means, if you'd like to take yourself off of mute and verbally speak with the project team about some of these things, you may do so. Uh, but the person did put yes. Well, all I can say is that we we don't show that condition, but underneath underneath the bridge there's railroad tracks and a stream. Um, so to cross that would require the construction of some sort of bridge. Um, anyway, so yeah, it wasn't really looked at because of the environmental constraints and the railroad constraints underneath. So we need to get people over those um, through the use of the bridge. Hopefully that answers the question. Yep, I see the person is off of mute. So if you want to speak up, you can certainly do so now. If not, you can return to mute and type in the chat box. <clears throat> okay, seeing as I don't hear anything. I will return that person to mute. Additional comments and questions again are welcomed in the chat box. And we will be here through 7 p.m. to answer any questions, go over any of the materials that was presented tonight thus far. And by all means, please feel free to utilize the chat box. If no additional questions come in, of course, we want to thank everyone for their time tonight. Thank you for attending this meeting, for your comments and questions into the chat box. We've really got some great information here, and thank you for your time. Again, this recording will be on the website probably by tomorrow. Again, Meadowlands Parkway Bridge is the website, and that's where you can also submit your questions and comments to us as well. Uh, 
Um, someone had come in a little bit late, Julia, and asked the question, is alternative six, is that what's moving forward? Could you specify what the recommendation is? Um, sure. So alternative six is the recommended preliminary preferred alternative. Um, that was based on the design team's um, analysis of uh, existing conditions, safety concerns, the stakeholder input, um, impacts to the surrounding area. Um, so that's what we're recommending gets advanced into design. Um, it's not really official until um, we complete the public information center. Um, and we, we have a couple other um, items to complete in concept development, such as going to an interagency review committee, um, which where where we present the project again, um, and they ultimately uh, decide whether the project will move forward or not. Um, so that this is what we're recommending. Um, we're recommending it um, based on a number of factors, um, one of which is constructability. Um, this alternative shifts the alignment to the east, and that allows us um, a little bit better constructability and it allows us to keep the Harmon Cove upper driveway open during construction for as long a duration as, as possible. It sort of maximizes that, um, that option. Um, and there's other things that, that come into play like safety. Um, some of the, the comments we received um, were to provide some some positive um, uh, de either delineators or protection for the bike lanes or look at uh, raising the bike lane um, from the the travel way um, so it's not said and done yet I think there's a couple other great recommendations that happen at this meeting that we can take a look at or or recommend be evaluated further in design um, but the premise um, of the preliminary preferred alternative that we're recommending is what's shown on the screen. Thank you for answering that question, Julia. And again, we will be here until 7 p.m. Additional questions or comments are welcomed into the chat box at this time. And if no additional comments or questions come in, we will remain muted until additional questions come through or visitors come into the meeting late, we will be here through 7 p.m. Julia, would you mention again the approximate construction start date and end dates? Sure. So we're currently anticipating construction will start in the year 2026. Um, we anticipate with um, three main construction stages that each would take a year to complete. Um, so we would look at, be looking at a possible end year of 2029. Thank you.
once again, the project team will remain muted and or off camera until additional questions or visitors come into the meeting. The time is now 6.25 and we will be here until 7, so please do continue to ask questions or comments into the chat box if you have any. And if not, again, this meeting recording will be available likely tomorrow on the project website, which is meadowlandsparkwaybridge.com. And once again, thank you for your participation in tonight's second Public Information Center meeting.
The time is now 7 p.m. and that concludes our second online public information center for the Meadowlands Parkway Bridge. The comment period is going to be through January 31st of 2022. And on behalf of the project team, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation tonight and welcome our all of our, our we, we appreciate and thank all of our guests for attending and also want to reiterate that all of the information will remain up on the project website, which is meadowlandsparkwaybridge.com. So for the so for the team and myself, I'd like to thank you again and wish you a good night. Good night, everyone. Hey, everyone. We turned our cameras on to make sure we were all still here. Thank you. <laughs>